Okay, so let's get started. So if you didn't see, I made a community post on my channel where I basically asked what you guys want me to answer in this series. Really happy with all the feedback I got on the last Q&A video and I wanna really make this a reoccurring series where you guys ask me direct questions and we chat about it and hopefully possibly on a weekly basis. So all of the questions revolved around real estate photography and how to land clients and just that side of the business. So that's what this is gonna primarily be about. So I figured it would also help if I shared my backstory. I've mentioned it before, but just just a little bit more in detail on how I got started to where I am today because it's definitely been quite a journey to just go from not knowing anything about real estate photography, zero clients or anything to now having like a luxury boutique style real estate photo video business that has consistent work coming in. So definitely a lot has happened in those four to five years now. So let's start at the beginning. Funny enough, I had no intention in going into real estate content whatsoever. I kind of just fell into it by accident, primarily because after I left my first and only job, which was at HEB, groceries. So if you're here in Texas, you know what HEB is. It's a grocery chain and I worked there for eight years. Then I picked up a camera along the way and just figured I wanted to make a living from that. Took a gamble and I left. I had no intention of going into the real estate field. I only did because my wife was entitled and pretty much has been most of her career as well. Once I quit my job at HEB, I was doing everything, doing some weddings, portrait work, products, family portraits, and then finally some real estate, which I didn't even know what it was to begin with. So I got connected by my first few clients because because I just looked in my inner circle, which is honestly the first thing I would recommend. What I mean by that is, do you know any realtors in your immediate family, family you kind of see on holidays, friends? Do your, some of your friends know any realtors that may be in, within their family? Just look within your inner circle and be like, hey, I want to just kind of get started in this field. Can I do something for you for free? Do some test shoots at one of your properties that you have for sale or coming up. Anything to just get your foot in the door. And that's pretty much what I did. Just got connected with some of the realtors she was working with. And, you know, we were already, you know, kind of good friends and so I just said let me try and do some shoots for you. I started doing some at charging nothing and then just going up from there like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks which I wouldn't recommend but I would recommend starting out for free because a lot of people have a problem with that but honestly the benefit of doing free work is there's no pressure, there's no bar that you have to meet because of you know whatever they're paying you so you can go in and there's no expectations and it's really good especially if you kind of don't know what you're doing or it's your first shoot and literally after I did one or two shoots I started branching out and I found a job offer on Indie for a local real estate photo company. So I sent them some of my work, got connected with them, and I got hired on. So my first job as a real estate photographer was not for myself. It was for another real estate photo company that had about 10 photographers. And funny enough, this experience was really awful. <laughs> I felt like the way this business ran was not really the best as far as customer service, the training, the work we delivered, but it really opened my eyes in how this field operated, which is honestly why I would actually recommend you doing this because you'll get consistent work as a real estate photographer and learn the ins and outs of the business and possibly get connected with clients after you go off on your own. So I was there for about six to eight months. I met a good friend of mine who actually now runs his own real estate photo company in my area as well. Even though we're competitors technically, we still never really step on each other's feet because there's so much work to go around and I'm primarily more in the luxury space as well. But he trained me and then I felt like I just kind of outgrew my position there and then I left and I got another offer to work as an on-staff salary real estate photographer for a local real estate team in my area. Now, before we're finishing up the video, I need to take my productivity shot. This is Magic Mind. Do more, stress less. That's right, a productivity shot aimed for creators, photographers, videographers, anyone and everyone, honestly. If you've been around on the channel, you've seen me partner with Magic Mind in the past, and I'm excited to be working with them again because I truly just wanna work with brands that I believe in, but that also believe in the videos that I make on this channel, like Magic Mind. So unlike having tons of coffee, which ironically, the one I made this morning sucked, or buying jittery energy drinks on the go between shoots that are not that good for you, this one actually is. And I'll even tell you a couple of things. Packed with nootropics for focus, matcha for energy, adaptogens for less stress, and vitamins for immunity, it's no wonder I never feel jittery when I take this shot. I only feel focused and ready to pump out whatever work I need to get done. So if you're interested in picking up some Magic Mind, you can head to the link in the description. Use code AndreRS20 to save yourself 20% off your purchase. And thanks so much to Magic Mind for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. Now back to the video. 
option. And that's the next thing I would recommend. You can actually start branching out to real estate teams in your area and see one, if they're looking for a dedicated real estate photographer or just see if you can start shooting some of their listings. Again, there's no expectation if you just offer something for free, for example, a free shoot, and then go from there just to land their business and get your foot in the door. Obviously, if you have been doing this now for a while and you have a portfolio and other clients you've worked with, sure, you can approach them with your rates and whatever you wanna do. So during the time that I was there for a few years, I grew to be also their social media content person as well. So I was producing some vlogs, video content, real estate photography, lifestyle photography. It was a lot, but the benefit of that is I also learned that whole side of the business that I offer as well, which is outside the real estate photo video space. So outside of the listings, a big chunk of our business and my business now is lifestyle photos, content for agents, reels, videos, bigger production stuff using lighting, audio, things like that. So I learned those skill sets as well. So it's honestly why I really recommend working for someone else that has one of these businesses established for that very reason, because you're gonna learn a lot. A lot of people try and skip that step, and I understand because they wanna work for themselves, grow their own thing, but you learn a lot, and you might make a lot of those mistakes working from them, learn from them, and not do them on your own, and save you a lot of time and effort. And then fast forward to 2021, I left that job because my daughter was born, and I opened my eyes to the fact that I just really wanted to have full control over my schedule, because I honestly felt like I missed her first few months, and that just wasn't okay with me. So I took the jump, of course, at the worst timing possible, but there's never a good jump to go off on your own. And I basically operated through 2021 as a freelance real estate photographer, videographer, basically building up all the media and visuals I wanted to launch my business, Pro Real Media, in 2022. So I didn't plan it exactly like that, but it kind of just happened that way because all of the content that I shot in 2021 worked perfect for all the media and things that I wanted to showcase when I launched the business, which was primarily a luxury boutique real estate photo video company here in Houston, Texas. And here we are today in 2023, where that is basically what I do and trying to take this business to the next level as well. But all that to say, I feel like if you don't really know too much about this business and you're coming from another field or you're struggling to keep consistent work, or maybe you're a complete beginner and you, or you don't even really know the basics of this stuff, I strongly, honestly encourage, go see if you can just kind of work part-time or work for a couple months for any or a real estate team that needs a dedicated photographer because I promise you, you're gonna learn a lot and just don't think about the fact that you're gonna be there forever or that you're not gonna be working on your own thing because you can do that on the side as well. And when the time comes, you're just gonna be a lot more prepared versus trying to do this all from the beginning with no knowledge whatsoever. So now let's jump into the first question. Man, that was a mouthful. Hopefully that story was valuable to you guys, but I feel like it is because I feel like it's a very unique journey and I feel like I wouldn't have gotten to where I am today if I didn't go through that. Like if I just jumped and trying to do my own thing back then, probably would have made a lot of mistakes and maybe just wouldn't even be doing what I'm doing today. So who knows? So first question, how should I go about landing clients for real estate photography? So there isn't much backstory on this in the sense of like, you know, are you new to this space? Are you an established photographer? I don't know too much backstory about this, so I'll try and give this a general answer. The best way that I can honestly say that we've gotten clients or more business has simply been through referrals. Word of mouth. So word of mouth are people seeing the work online on social media or other listings or things like that. For example, there's one team that I started with, which funny enough were my first clients when I went off on my own as a freelancer and they're still probably one of my biggest clients today, but it really helps that they're a top producing team at their brokerage and their brokerage is massive. And so whenever they post their work, all of these other teams and agents that are also on the brokerage see the work on social media or wherever it is and then they reach out. And I always ask them, how did you hear about us or how did you get in touch with us? And most of the time they honestly say, we saw your work from whatever person and it was really great and we're looking for someone else and so they come to us, which is really cool because I don't do any sort of targeted marketing, advertising, anything like that. All I simply do is just post the work that I wanna show, which is a really key thing. Show the work you wanna shoot. It took me forever to learn that as a photographer in other fields. I always thought you had to share anything and everything to get more work and if you do that, you're just gonna get whatever work, not the work that you really want. For my business, we only share the luxury higher end properties we shoot because that's the type of work we wanna do along with all the lifestyle stuff like higher end videos and lifestyle photography. But even though we do get lower end, smaller properties, and I don't really share those because that's not exactly what we wanna shoot. So if I was starting over, I would still probably go and just start networking with local real estate photography companies, if not also starting in my inner circle first. You need some sort of work to showcase what you can do. That way you can kind of wow these potential clients and you can land their business. And so I would even also reach out to model homes. So see if there's any new developments in your area, walk in, say, hey, I'm a local real estate photographer. I'd love to just take 
take a couple of photos if that's not too much trouble. And I'd be happy to share the photos with you as well so you can use them or whatever you want. So half the time that works too because we use model homes for video shoots, lifestyle photo shoots. So that's definitely a really good potential option as well. But that's also again why I didn't simply jump into creating my business right as I started because I, I was like, I don't really have the content that I wanna showcase. And I couldn't use any of the stuff that I shot at that real estate team because that belonged to them. So I had to go out, create my own stuff. And again, I just didn't wanna share whatever I had shot at the time. I wanted to build up a really great gallery of things that I wanted to showcase that would be used for the business. And I think it worked out well that way. Next question is how to prepare, present a portfolio, presentation, website, or both. What other ways have you successfully marketed to gain a new client? So I pretty much answered that second part just now. The best way to land a new client in this business is through referrals, which means creating and showcasing the best work you can out of any and all listings or whatever work you do. I think it's seriously the biggest driving factor. Instead of trying to just message and spam a bunch of like local Instagram pages in your area, I just feel like that stuff doesn't work really well because when other types of businesses do it for me, I ignore it because I just feel like you're not really paying attention to me. You're just kind of just sending whatever service or product you offer to just anybody and everybody. So I'm just not really that interested versus going out of your way, connecting with them directly and showcasing the work that you can do. But in regards to a website, that is so key. So yes, I definitely recommend you have a website. Personally, funny enough, I've never done one of these, you know, live presentations at a real estate team. Some people say they gain a lot out of it, but I just feel like I don't see the same value out of it. Personally, maybe because I feel like the referral way is just working so well. We're just, uh, you know, posting the work gets other work, but having a really stellar website is key because one thing that I noticed when I was building my business is a lot of the local real estate photo video companies in my area have really outdated websites. Like using them is just a headache and they're not modern, clean, but they're really clunky and buggy. So I simply went to Squarespace, not sponsored, even though I'd love to be sponsored by Squarespace, but I had just been using Squarespace most of my career, built a really nice website, but spent a lot of time optimizing it. It's still not perfect, but I really feel like if a client lands on the website, it usually converts them. And back on the referral thing, when I ask people how they found us, they'll be like, they'll either say they saw us from someone else posting the work or because they landed on our website and they were really wowed by it. Having a really clean website that's sleek, minimal, and modern, I feel like goes a long way because again, other companies don't really have that. Obviously they're catching up now, but if you constantly update it with your best work and the type of stuff you wanna shoot, it's gonna go a long way as well. And using something like Squarespace, Wix, whatever it is that's just really clean and minimal with one of their templates is super easy. It's all about just the work that you showcase honestly. Okay, next question is a bit of a long one. It's how to battle versus real estate photo companies that can have a photographer on any location of the week and any time of the week. So many agents main focus is having someone available at all times. I know, and it's, <laughs> it's honestly frustrating. Some people will say that photographers that work for those companies aren't great and to just be better than them. But I work for myself and my own company and, and to these companies in my state because it's damn near impossible to go up against them. I've also seen the work from other photographers in these companies and we all supply amazing work. So the question again would be, how can you gain, grow your clients when there are these companies that have essentially monopolized the state you're in? Totally, so that is a very valid question. I understand because especially here in my area, there's like four to five main players. And some of these companies, like the one that I would rank number one has like over 50 photographers. And if you need a real estate photographer, you can just go to them and have them at any time. They're priced better than me, but here's the thing. And this is the thing I keep coming back to. I feel like the work is not that good. The customer service starts to slack the bigger the company gets because they're just trying to get orders done. And some of these agents that really want more of a personal touch, more attention to detail, will go to other smaller companies or independent photographers like me and my business because they want that. They want that better quality. They want that personal touch where they, they can just reach me through a text message at whatever time of the day, not call and just get an answering machine or an admin. So those things go a long way. I honestly feel like half of this business is simply the work that you do and your personality. So just giving your clients really good customer service honestly gets you almost the whole way there. And funny enough, I would put having a really good personality and not so good work over having really great work and terrible personality. Because if you think about it, most of the time photographers, especially real estate photographers, they're most of the time more on the introverted side. Obviously not all of them, but some of these that work at these companies might just not have the best personality. You know, they might just be more to themselves. They just want to get the job done versus someone like you that represents you and your business are always going to go the extra mile because it's just, you know, it's your own thing. So it's really tough to say because based on your situation, it sounds like they do amazing work, but in my experience, but half the time when a new client gets in touch with me and I ask them where they came from, it's because they were using one of these bigger companies and they just got frustrated from having one too many mistakes or bad customers 
customer service interactions or just any sort of issues. And when they come to me, it's a very simple model because they can just book it with me. I contact them and then we set a date. I shoot it, deliver the work. I try and be extra personable with them and just make that really good relationship. And it goes a long way because if you do that first gig right along with the work and having a good personality, chances are they're gonna come back for sure. But if work is not an aspect like this person is saying, they all do the same amount of good work, try and differentiate yourself. Are any of them doing Instagram reels? Are any of them doing detail close-ups of these higher end properties? Are they doing property websites? Just see what they're not offering and see if you can offer that yourself. And even as far as the photo editing, how are they editing their photos? How can you stand out with your photo editing or the photos that you deliver, the quality of the product to make yourself different from them? And another thing I wanted to mention is if you're getting value out of this video, you should really think about joining my community. I started a community aimed for photographers, videographers that are just starting out primarily in the real estate space so I can help you even more. Within my community, you get access to a digital welcome pack full of presets and LUTs that I constantly use during my workflow, a behind the scenes video series where I bring you along to an actual job shoot and show you whatever I'm doing that day. And third, a private chat group with other photographers, videographers doing exactly what you're doing, which is trying to grow their photo video business. And honestly, this is probably my favorite perk because I'm blown away by the feedback in this community. I think we have about 60 members at the time of recording this video and everyone is getting a ton of value out of it. It's so great to have a space where you can ask questions, post your work, get feedback. Even myself, I'm getting tons of value from the people in there already. And it's only $5 per month. So if you're interested, head to the link in description. Now back to the video. And lastly, how to outsource editing, find a photo editor overseas to help with workflow. What formats would you recommend shooting in to send it? HDR, Flambiant, apology if you've already covered this. Finding an editor, especially for real estate photography, was definitely a big hurdle to get over because I was just so meticulous on my, just every little detail about my business and my photography and things like that. But having an editor has just given me so much time back and it is just, I recommend it so much. Especially if you're getting to that point where you're not just doing one list thing a week, you're doing a couple, you're doing more than that, you're doing a couple a day maybe. Having an editor that you can use and rely on to produce the same quality of work you want is a game changer. And especially the fact, I wanna highlight the one that she said overseas because this is really common. Even the editor that we use, which I recently got in touch with, is an independent person, but they are overseas, I believe. And the great thing about that is because they're in a different time zone. So whenever we come home and we're done with the day at 5 p.m. or whatever, and we upload our stuff that evening, Evening, their day is just getting started. So it works out perfect because when I wake up the next day, the photos are already edited and I get my evenings back. <laughs> so all I have to do once I get it back from the editor is touch up a couple of things like I do in Photoshop just because of how detailed I am, but that's pretty much it and it's really great. Because that investment of having an editor is maybe like five to 10 to 20% max of what that job might be in my opinion. And I think that that is far more worth it than doing it yourself and limiting on the amount of jobs you can take. But more to our question, how do you find someone? That's the trickiest part because we've gone through a lot of editors. So many of them will reach out on Instagram or email me directly. And when I look at the work, it all looks the same or it just doesn't really stand out to me. So it is really tough, but I got my recommendation from another local photographer. And then I also, use a company called photo up which I honestly would recommend for you to check out because they offer tons of services outside of real estate photography and it's a credit based system and they use a lot of trained editors which might be a great way to get started because some of the times the biggest gripes I have with overseas editors is communication is difficult obviously since they're in a different time zone it's hard to get in touch with them immediately and once these outsource overseas editing companies get too big their quality drops and that was the biggest thing for me I had to go find a new editor someone that's small and just again Again, exactly like the real estate photo company that gets too big with so many photographers, they just lose that customer service touch. And so it's really hard. And so one thing that I would recommend is just reach out to other photographers. Maybe the ones that aren't in your area, maybe a next town over where they're not competition at all, might be happy to share the editor that they use. So maybe you can find another real estate photography company. And if their work is similar to yours, be like, hey, I'm a real estate photographer in a totally different area, not any competition to you. And I'm just trying to find an editor. Would you be willing to share yours or recommend any? That's something I would do, you could easily do that on Instagram or join real estate photography forums like on Facebook because I'm a part of a couple of those and people are always sharing editors or asking for editors on there. And so that might be another way as well. And personally, I covered this in the last one, but I shoot HDR entirely. So five bracketed auto exposure bracketed photos to have a really dynamic HDR image. But the biggest thing for me with these editors is how they edit them. I don't want it to look crazy, over processed, over edited. I want it to look a lot more natural. I'd rather have a soft white, 
slightly blown out window versus like completely detailed fake blue skies put in. It just doesn't look good to me and I'd rather just look more clean. That's just my opinion. It looks more clean if it looks more natural. And so that's one thing that I would look for. If you do whatever method you shoot like Flambient or HDR, I would recommend that you give them a sample. Most of these editors to land your work will do free work in exchange. Like I mentioned for real estate photography, half of them will be like, hey, we'll edit a few photos for you just to see what we can do. And then that way you can compare it with whether you edited it or someone else did to see if the work is the quality that you want it to be. But yeah, having an editor is a game changer. And if you're thinking about it, it might be because you're getting to the point where you're doing a lot of volume, which is a great thing, but that's where an editor can come in and make your life a lot better. And you can take on more work. Okay, so that is pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys got value out of this. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you're getting value out of these Q&A videos. I love doing these, they're really chill, laid back, and I feel like the information is great, especially the feedback that I got from the last video. So let me know below. But that's it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment down your thoughts, and subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel. See you in the next episode.